Hello, this is Ray and Jenny again uh, for Weber Family Reviews. And I've had a couple of Facebook questions and I decided to convince Jenny to do a larger player count list. And we realized we don't have a ton of games with larger player counts, they're harder to find. But we managed to come up with six each. Well, um, that's because we play a lot of two player. They have to be good two player for us to have them too. So why don't you start this time? Okay. So this is floor plan. This actually says one to a hundred on the side of the box. Mm -hmm. So definitely goes. Um, this is a roll and write. You get to build the floor plan of your house. You're building your yard as well. And you have certain client demands. The thing though is, is really everyone has their own sheet of paper and there's communal dice and really it supports as many people as you want. Um, and then you just each take turns using them. You all use the same dice um, and draw in what you want and then you keep going. So really simple. Um, the rules are not that yeah. complex. So it's easy to teach a large group. And I said you can really support as many people as you want, which makes it nice. And it's a 20 minute game. It's not super long either. You could easily play a couple games of it if you wanted, or you could just play one quick game. And that one, yeah, that one's just, just fun. And everybody comes up with a wildly different uh, place. All right, this one's an oldie, but a goodie for sale is probably one of the older games that we own. Um, this one says 2008. I don't know if that's the earliest printing, but it's, um, honestly, it's really easy. Basically the first uh, phase, you guys are spending money and uh, basically bidding to get the highest cards you can for your hand. And then the second phase, you're getting more money by taking tricks with those cards. No trump, just you want to play the highest if, and the highest player gets the most money. Person with the most money at the end of the game wins. I mean, it's good. It's a 20, 30 minute, plays up to six, and uh, it's relatively cheap to find. It's really good. We like it a lot and we like it. It's a good filler game. Um, and you could really even only play half of it if you wanted to. This is code names, uh, Disney, but there's tons of code names you don't have to own yeah. Disney. This is just what I pulled off the shelf. We have that in pictures in the house, and we probably have another one somewhere else. Um, and this is it supports again as many people. You have two teams, um, and uh, you know you're just taking turns trying to get them to pick the right cards. Really easy to do, um, and if you, if you, it's a group of people who know each other well, it can be really amusing as you try to come up with the most creative clues that you know you know yep. so and so will get, but the other person won't. Um, but even if you don't know the people, it's usually pretty easy to come up with something that everyone knows. Um, and as I said, there's you know there's a flavor of code names for everyone. So you don't like Disney, no problem. You can have Marvel. You can have. Harry Potter, I don't know. There's probably 50 versions of this game. Um, really cheap and easy to find. Target, Walmart, all of them sell it. Um, and as I said, as many people, because you really want a big group. And then it's, it's also easy for people to fade in and out of because it's just two teams. So if you've got someone who's maybe watching kids or helping with dinner, you know, you can have a group and then cut a couple rounds leave and it's no big deal that they left and then come back another round and it really didn't matter. So that's also useful at big group gatherings is that ability to keep a game going even as people change mm -hmm. in and out. Mm -hmm. So next is another uh, older one and this one. That's the bookshelf line of games, Yeah, right? the bookshelf line. This one's 2013 is what's listed on it, but this has been a diamant. It's been around for a very long time. It's ink and gold. Ink and gold is a pressure luck game, and I, I've got another one on it, where basically you're going through a temple, Indiana Jones style, trying to get as much treasure as you can, and you're always splitting it with everybody who goes in. However, if enough of the same hazards show up, everybody loses everything they have as they run out of the temple screaming. So the goal is, when do you go back? And you can get even more treasures on your way out uh, the more you, uh, the less people that leave the same round, the more stuff you pick up you. Uh, for the, uh, for some of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all right. Picky, yeah. picky. Yeah. But, but there's really, you know, and again, really easy and quick to play supports up to eight. Um, and it's mm -hmm. one decision. Yes or no go or stay. So, you know, 
you don't have to think super hard about it, but it's lots of fun. This is King of Tokyo. This is Monster Yahtzee. Our kids love it. And this plays up to six because um, there's two. If you play only to four, it just has Tokyo. If you play five or six, you have Tokyo Bay as well. Um, and all you're doing is attacking each other with the dice. And uh, there's We're several different points. Yeah. We're going for points. And actually, the larger player count, usually you win by points because that's easier than knocking everyone else out. My mother likes to win that way because she just sits back and collects points. And all of a sudden, oh, I won. Um, so really easy. Anyone who's played Yahtzee can play this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple of expansions for it if you like it. But, you know, the five to six player comes with it. Um, there's no special thing you need for it. Really easy to teach and to play. And again, just lots of fun because who doesn't like beating up monsters? Well, you are the monster, so you're beating up on it. Oh, no, but, but it's still beating up monsters. Okay, another press your luck zombie dice. Little container here. You draw dice, you roll them. If you get three shotgun blasts, your turn is over. Your goal is to collect 13 brains. That's it. Straightforward. Any number of people can play it. You just need a piece of paper to keep track of who has how many brains. You don't even have to really try that hard. And there's a bunch of dice in it that are, are different ratios. And this one works really well. So any number really can can play it. I, I don't think we've we've hit a point where we went, man, this is long. But do remember that it's a pressure luck. So the longer... The more people you have, the longer it is between your turns, but you're still rooting for them, or you're rooting for them to get the shotgun blasts. It, it works. Well, any turn is so quick. We also have the dino hunt version of it, which is yeah, the same, same thing. thing. It's just you're looking for dinos and see if you get stomped on by the dinos, which is uh, what our kids like. So. Yep. This is Seven Wonders. If you want something more in-depth, mm -hmm. this plays up to seven, um, as the name says, Seven Wonders, Seven Players. And uh, it's only a 30-minute game, but this is definitely a harder game. There's a lot of iconography. There's a lot of pieces to it. And you have to be willing to n realize you're probably not going to really know what's going to go on until you get all the way through age three the first time. Um, because it's really hard to explain how the different cards link up. I mean, you can show them, but until you've actually played through a couple of ages, you almost have to be willing to just kind of chalk the first game up to whatever. And then as you play it, then, oh, I see how this works. Um, you can, like totally win on science if you're good at it. I am not. I never win by science. Um, but there's ways to do militarily, economy. There's lots of choices. Um, but definitely this is one where you do need to be thinking somewhat more, but it plays just as fast at seven as it does at three or four. And so that's nice. So if you want something a little bit, you know, higher order strategy, this is a good game to pull out if you have that larger group that all want to play a little bit, you know, you know, not, it's not a heavy game. But, you know, something you do have to think about. Yep. One that's gotten a lot of play, and I've actually used this in classes that talk about various aspects of human factors, is uh, the resistance. This is a hidden, um, well, I, I always want to say hidden role, which, which is social accurate. Social deduction. But social deduction game. Um, where you're trying to complete some missions, and you select your team. If you select your team, and your team... Uh, has a traitor, you may fail the mission. If you fail enough missions, uh, the traitors win. It's straightforward. Um, she says I'm the traitor no matter what. Before we even start the game. Yeah, that, that's my, my motif, is I just accuse Ray of being the traitor no matter what. So, I mean, if I am, it helps because she does it all the time. So, this one works really quick. Uh, and if you take it lighthearted, it's, it's fun and everybody seems to enjoy it. So, the resistance. This is another roll and write on tour. And the box says one to four, but you can actually, as long as you have the expansion boards, and you could even just probably print them, um, yep. you can play up to 12. No big deal. Um, because this is just, you're rolling two dice, you got some states out that you're the communal, and then you're just writing stuff on the board. So, as long as everyone has their own board, you can really support as many people as you want. Um, and it's never going to take any long because you go and tell you've got your map of the United States filled up and you fill in two a turn. Um, and each turn, it's all simultaneous, so you're doing something every time. And it's really just a puzzle. Where do I put it? How do I get the numbers to work? So you're trying to make the best route to hit the most states when you finish to get the best tour. Um, real quick and easy, if you want to roll and write a little bit different, again, there's very little 
there's very little rules to learn, but there is a lot of strategy to where you place the different ones because your tour has to go in numerical order. So you have to get that right linkage up and you get more points if they're circled and they're circled if it's named. There's a couple little intricacies to the rules, but again, the rules are like two pages. Yeah. So it's really easy and quick to teach. All right. So uh, one of my favorite racing games is Downforce because you can win by losing. Um, what, the way it works is you have a series, you have a car that's yours, possibly more, depends on the player count, and you'll get money for the placing of that car, but you also bet on the other cars, and how the cars move is each player will play a card from their hand. On that card, there's a number of uh, the colored cars and how far they go. So, in theory, you can bet on a specific car play a card that will move that car ahead and block other cars and gum things up. And you can, there's a lot more strategy than people give it. Um, at the same time, it's really easy to play and it's fun and it plays just as well at six as at three, you know, it, it rolls really well. And I, you know, it, time-wise it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's really good. And what the first time we did it with the, with the group, we ended up playing it four times in a row, so with different player counts. It was good. Um, and uh, there's Camel Cup, which is the probably the easier version of that. Not really easier, but it, it has a lot less strategy. This one has more strategy, so if you want something that ha you have more control over, yep. this is the one for you. A lot of people recommend Camel Cup, which I enjoy Camel Cup. We own Camel Cup. Um, but this one definitely, yeah. you feel like you have more control over your car than you do those idiot camels. Well, it's not random die rolls yes. and pull. You you're picking pick. what you're doing. And you have your whole hand, you're not drawing, so yep. you can plan out. This is Mystery of the Abbey. This is really just a, this is really clue. Um, except that you get to ask kind of whatever question you want as long as we answer it in a certain way. Um, and so, as you met, and you're trying to decide, you know, who killed the right person, and you're trying, well, the you know, before they escape uh, the monastery. Yep. It's a fun little game, and it's for anyone who's played Clue will know how to play this, but there's definitely more control, yep. and there's no rolling. Yep. So you're not stuck, okay, I can't get to that room I need because I need to get all the way across the board. Um, but really, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I like the freedom of the questions, although that can be a little bit, because then you have to think about yeah. the questions. There's not that ritualized, you always ask this format. But you're going to find there's certain questions you're going to repeat and ask. So definitely um, something fun to do with the group. Excuse me. I've been slightly distracted because the cat was uh, attacking my feet. Hail Hydra, uh, another social deduction hidden roll game. And this one's got a Marvel theme. It's got a bit more to it than, say, um, The Resistance. But there's there's a... It's Marvel. It's... Yeah. It's another social deduction game. Works really well, especially if somebody is uh, a Marvel fan. And it's smooth. I mean, there's a lot of fun. And it's five to eight players. So you can get away with four, but you really want five. And, and the more you get, the better off you are. Those so. games that you'd rather be at eight. Yep. Um, so, but really the large easy to player play. count. Our kids like it. Yep. So. All right. Thank you, and have a happy holiday, and enjoy your gaming.